What's up, guys? It's the first Poker Guys blog vlog. Sorry, I guess I'm not writing this. I'm saying this ever. And it's brought to you by Nitrogen Sports. We're going to tell you about that more later. But let's talk to Jonathan because he just went to day three of the Millionaire Maker. And I got him right here. Jonathan. Oh, sorry. Get nauseous. One second. Yeah, that's all. But now yeah. we're past that. We're that, past that. A horrible moment. Yeah, it's our vlog. We're very excited to do a few of these while we're here in Las Vegas during the World Series of Poker. I did make day three, although I'm currently and forever out of this year's Millionaire Maker. Yeah. I finished 105th out of almost 7,800 7, entrants. So it was a long slog, two very long days of poker, and I busted relatively early on day three, about an hour in. And I wanted to tell you guys about two key hands that happened that really helped propel me to uh, finish as high as I did. And you know, I had a relatively nice cash. I, there's a lot more money to be won, believe me. I would have liked to have had it. But it was pretty good, it was like about $8,000. Doesn't suck. Um, so on day, let me see here, what's a good one? Oh, this is great. Relatively early on day two, I had a relative short stack. So we're, we're in the money, but and we've locked up like $2,200. And there's no big money jumps for a long time. So I don't care about the money at all. I'm not thinking about the money. I'm just trying to do well with my stack. And Alex, Foxen, who I had never heard of, but is the number 107 player on the GPI. So he's very, very good. He's an internet wizard, one of those guys. Opens in relatively early position. He min opens, or opens min plus one. Folds to me in the big blind. I have queen 10, I have the queen of clubs and the 10 of hearts. And I call, you know, you gotta do that. The fob comes out 10, three, four, all spades. I check, Alex continues small. Uh, it's about three and a half thousand at that point. It's an easy call for me with top pair. I call. The turn, hold on, I wrote it down because I don't want to get it wrong for you guys. The turn. Way to go, so, Jonathan. It's hard, okay? So it was 10, 7, 6 was the flop? Probably. Let's go with that. The turn is a three. <laughs> the turn is, is an offsuit three. Um, I check. Alex bets again. This time he bets six and a half thousand. Now, I only have about 25,000 left. So this is a significant bet for me. And while it's not committing for me to call, I can still fold on the river. I'm already making, this is a big inflection point for me in the hand. And I just know, I can tell by looking at him, although I didn't know who he was at that point, this is a good player who's absolutely capable of continuing to bet here and probably is putting me on a big spade a lot. So I felt like I just had to call and it was just way too early to fold. Uh, the river brought a four. So there's a four card straight up. There's an offsuit four is 10, seven, six, three, four. So eight, nine is already there. But besides that, there's, there's three spades and there's four cards to a straight. I check and Alex goes all in. And for him, he had a lot more chips than me. So he was just moving me in. And I thought for about two minutes, I told him I was losing to all of his value so he could feel good about that. And I ultimately remembered a little bit earlier when he had the nuts against a different player and he bet relatively small on the river. And it's possible he was just being exploitative against that player. But I thought it was he might not move me in with a really, really big hand when it looks like I'm just holding on. And that combined with the fact I knew he was capable of bluffing there, pushed me to call. I put my chips in and he said he had just had king high. And I had a really big double up. It was a huge double up at that spot for me. And suddenly I had a bunch of blinds. And not too long after I had aces against queens, doubled up again and suddenly had a big stack and it was great. Uh, the one other really key hand for me on day two, I opened ace eight of diamonds. Now this is late in day two. So, you know, the money has improved a fair amount, but still I'm not thinking about the money jumps at all. I have ace eight of diamonds and I open in middle position and the big blind likes to three bet. And indeed he does. Uh, I made it 4.6 thousand. He made it 12.6 thousand. And a lot of times you would fold ace eight here because it's not very good, but I was in position and I've decided I'm not gonna fold to too many three bets when I'm getting a good price in position. I have a reasonable hand. This was a reasonable hand. So I decided to call. The effective stack was the other guy. I had probably 140,000 chips at this point and he had something like, you know, 110. So the flop was jack nine five with one diamond. So I flopped two back doors as you often do and ace high and not very much. And he continued, but he continued small. He bet eight and a half thousand. So I just felt like that was a very weak bet. And it's possibly as a set of jacks, I know. And it's, if he, there's a lot of things he could have here that's very strong, but I thought he would probably bet more if he had a strong hand. So I decided to call, being that I'm in position, with the plan of betting if he checked the turn and almost always folding unless I improve significantly on the turn. So I called the eight and a half thousand. I could afford it, that made it easier too. 
The turn helped me a tiny bit anyway. It was a six. So it's Jack nine, five, six. So with ace eight of diamonds, still just one diamond. But now I have a gut shot, so that's kind of cool. He did what I needed him to do in check. Because I was definitely gonna fold if he bet any amount pretty much on the turn. Unless it was super tiny to try and realize my gut shot equity. And um, so I just thought like the plan is to bet here. I'm betting. He, he's gonna have to fold ace king. He's gonna have to fold king, uh, ace queen. He's got, he has tens may have to fold. Lots of things are gonna have to fold here. Not very many hands can really hang on. So I bet 20,500. He thought for a solid three minutes and finally called, which I wasn't loving, but I already in my head decided I'd love to make a straight, but if I don't, unless I hit an ace, I'm probably gonna bluff the river. Like I just feel like I need to bluff the river in this spot a lot of the time, depending on the, the river. The river was an offsuit queen, which is an interesting card. He checks and I just thought, I don't think he has very many strong hands here. Like, I don't think he has a set of queens very often at all. I don't think he has a set very often. I think he usually has one pair, and it's probably tens. And by the way, if he has ace jack, he's hitting his life. And while you may say he three bet ace jack, this was a guy who did stuff like that. So I moved in. I, I went all in and waited a good six or seven minutes before he finally folded. And it felt really good. It was a, at that point about an 80K pot. It cut him down to about a big chunk of a stack came over to me and he almost certainly had the best hand. Talking to Grant about it later, Grant's pretty sure he had king queen and it makes sense to me too. He, called, he bet the flop, called the turn with overs and the gut shot and uh, rivered the queen but decided it wasn't good enough. He actually asked me if I had pocket nines, which would of course be a middle set. And I said, uh, you know, I'll never tell, but it, you made a good fold, which is what I always tell people. <laughs> um, so the only other interesting thing that, that thing that really, really happened that was fun is Late in day two, another player at the table, really fun guy named Frank, liked to drink, liked to talk about stuff, sports. He and I got into a very friendly disagreement about when the Patriots scored their first touchdown in the most recent Super Bowl. And he thought there was more than five minutes to go in the third quarter. And I said, there's no way, you're absolutely wrong. And he said, I was at the game, you're wrong. And I said, I'd love to make a wager on that, sir. And uh, I, I offered $10 and he said, how about 500? And I said, I mean, Frank, you know, how about $100? We could bet $100. And he said, $500. And I shook his hand and we both gave $500 to the guy sitting in between us. And then all action at the table stopped. The cards were still being dealt, hands were still being played, but basically all anyone talked about was, what was the score and when did they score it? And everyone was looking it up on their phones and talking about it. It became a big deal, a big part of the, uh, the table for about seven minutes until the guy was holding the money. I found it really quickly, but no one believed me, even though it was on my phone. I don't know why that was not considered fair, but I found two different sources, but no one thought that was good enough. The guy in between us found the, a, a source, I think with a pro football reference, and proved that the Patriots scored something like two minutes and 12 seconds uh, left in the third quarter, and I got shipped 500 extra dollars. Pretty good. So it was effectively a 1K tournament for you. It got a little bit cheaper, a little bit better for me, for sure. Tell them about nitrogen. Okay. So if you don't already know, Nitrogen Sports, who is sponsoring this vlog, we really thank them for that. They are a Bitcoin only poker site. It's awesome. Bitcoin is of course the wave of the future. And one of the things that's great about it is you get your deposits and your withdrawals lightning, lightning fast. And when we say lightning fast here at Poker Guys Central, or we're in the wind, but you know what I mean. We mean like 10 to 25 minutes, you get your money out of nitrogen. What? I know it's crazy, <laughs> but it's awesome. The software is good. They're really wonderful people. The customer support is really good and um, it's also uh, very low uh, in terms of signing up. You don't need to give them very much information, which is great. So it's just what, name and uh, password, and that's it, right? Username that's it. Password. So it's a really great site. We strongly encourage you to click the link in the description. That way you get access to Poker Guy's free rolls, other cool stuff that's coming. Definitely get a part of that. Just click the link and sign up. You get access to all of it. We'll see you on Nitrogen, because that's where we play.